Hello there, everyone. It is Bob Martin, the RC sub guy with the NautilusDryDocks.com, here with Jason Butterfield, the shop manager here at the Dry Docks. And we're really excited because we are uh, debuting with this video, what we call our version two of our new 300 series sub driver. There's a lot of upgrades over the first version. We're gonna show you what those look like and then we're gonna build this cylinder out, start to finish, front to back, so you see exactly how it goes together for your new purchase. So, hey, let's get started. So before we dig into putting the cylinder together, I want to talk to you about the changes in version two over the original version that we put out uh, about six months ago. We're going to start at the, uh, at the forward end. Everything that you see here is kind of the same. We've got these uh, studs and seals and knurled nuts, but we completely changed the way that these servos are mounted so now rather than them being uh, quasi permanently adhered to the bulkhead these are now basically bolt in so they slip into place and then this locking bar gets put in there the original linear servos that we had worked just fine but the problem was they only had about six millimeters of travel so we went back to a more conventional style of linkage and these give you almost triple that so you got lots and lots of throw now uh, it makes your project installation for the linkages much, much easier. i uh, got a nice large battery tray in here so you can fit up to a, a 3,300 uh, milliamp hour lithium polymer battery underneath here. And then we switched the position so now the receiver is actually going to be mounted uh, far away from the electronic speed controller, from the motor. Uh, it's going to be mounted up here on the top. These tubular sections are the same. The ballast section, however, is different. Again, some new upgrades here. So rather than the ballast uh, section here, the clear ballast section being adhered with RTV to these bulkheads, they are now bolted in place just as they were before, but they're uh, sealed now with O-rings. So if you do ever need to get into that ballast tank, it's a much, much easier and cleaner way of going about that. But we also made it uh, a little bit easier for you to not have to get in there because we went with a large rectangular opening in the bottom here for the water to get in and out of. And this gives you actually really good access to the uh, nipples for the air intake and then also the linkages for the ballast vent. So 90% of cases, you won't have to take things apart. You'll be able to access it through this nice big access hole in the bottom. The other thing that we did, we switched uh, back to our very, very original uh, configuration for the pumps. So rather than these uh, um, sucking and blowing directly into the ballast tank, which was a good idea in theory, the sealing of it was not something that we felt comfortable with. We reverted back to our original version. So now really there's just two small pass-throughs in this bulkhead, which means sealing them is exponentially easier. Uh, modified the bulkheads a little bit. We've got a bespoke area for the 2IS switch to sit now. And then uh, some big changes in the, in the back here. So if you remember correctly, we mounted originally the brushless motors in the wet, which is fine. They absolutely love getting wet. There's no problem with that. However, in going away from the uh, shaft seal, we created three um, electric pass-throughs. And so basically we tripled the amount of, of uh, permeations uh, in the bulkhead. And so for the sake of, of safety, for making sure that we eliminate as many opportunities for leaks as possible, we went back to mounting it inside the cylinder so there's just a single uh, seal that goes through. Same way of mounting the servos uh, on this end. This is a completely universal bulkhead. Uh, same on the other side. We got a nice little equipment tray in here now that holds the uh, BL Heli 35 amp electronic speed controller in a nice tidy package there. 
Now looking on the end, you can see this kind of uh, funny looking deal here. Um, this is basically a, uh, a gear box. And so what we've decided to do is uh, go away from actually dual motors and we're going with a nice uh, smooth custom gearbox that we designed in house here. And uh, you can see what that would look like if that was uh, outfitted there. There'd be a gear on that output shaft. And then you got two output shafts uh, from a single in. So it kind of simplifies the drivetrain a little bit and um, allows you to have both uh, or either a single output shaft or dual output shafts. You can just simply uh, swap in your gears and away you go. So those are the main upgrades uh, over the version one 300 series watertight cylinder. Um, the good news for anybody that did purchase the original version, obviously those work, there's nothing wrong with them. But if you like what you see here, these are all completely interchangeable. You can buy these, they fit perfectly in here. The holes should all line up. There shouldn't be any difference uh, in that at all if you wanted to swap out for the new end caps or pump bulkheads or uh, anything like that. All right, <clears throat> clean work station is vitally important here. Um, what we're going to do, let's get started with some uh, kind of easy low hanging fruit. But before we get there, uh, the other optional thing that we highly recommend is this heavy duty remote on off switch. Uh, these are like $35 and they make turning your model on and off really easy. Um, we're going to use some uh, Velcro as well. You're, you might want to grab some of this from your local hardware store. It's self-adhesive Velcro because we're going to start um, on the battery tray, mounting the battery. Jason's going to take the electronic uh, switch out of its case because it's super huge the way it stands right now. And uh, I'm just going to go about putting this Velcro in the battery tray and on the battery. There we go. Easy as that. Now I got the studs uh, for the back already <clears throat> threaded through the, uh, the bulkhead back there. And uh, we're just gonna go ahead and put this on. You'll notice we got some room back here. We didn't mount the battery too far back so that these wires do have room to exit without uh, impeding the battery position. We've got red, white, and two blacks, uh, as well as a blue wire. The blue wire is just uh, your antenna. So that's just gonna get coiled up and tucked out of the way. The blacks are a common bus for ground. So it doesn't matter which one of those you use, you're gonna bundle the white and black and the red and black. Red and black is the power in, that's gonna come from your battery, okay? The white and the black are gonna be going out to the cylinder. And for each one of those, we're gonna put connector on there. Uh, Jason's gonna handle that right now, and then we'll uh, stick everything to our tray. All right, while we're here, let's take a quick look at these, this forward bulkhead. When you get this, there should be a little uh, brass nipple on there with a, a length of rubber hose on there. The purpose behind this is twofold. Uh, one, if you uncap the end of it, you can blow into this tube when your cylinder is assembled, when it's under the water, pressurize the cylinder, and then you can look for bubbles uh, to test for leaks. The other thing that you're gonna end up doing though, if you're running a 75 megahertz antenna, uh, you are going to feed that through that brass tube. You can pull this off and feed it through the rubber hose all the way to the end. And then when you put this back on, you've still got your test hose, but your antenna can now be stretched all the way out the length of your entire boat. And that improves your reception. That was a trick that I learned from Greg Sharp when I lived back in, uh, in Victoria, British Columbia. So that's just a note about your, uh, your test tube, your test hose there. While I'm on the subject, the proper antenna length for 75 megahertz is 39.3 inches overall. Now, some of these receivers that you have are gonna give you a portion of that 
uh, wavelength. And you can see this is fairly short. It's still gonna work, but it's just not gonna give you as good reception. So what we typically do is, uh, is snip this down here and put a full 39.3 inch long wire on there and that'll give you a little bit better reception. All right, here is our assembled battery tray. And this is this is what we did. And obviously you guys can organize this however you want. We just kind of did it this way. Remote switch. Uh, it was bolted down with some little bolts that we had, making sure it wasn't gonna interfere with the battery. Um, the BLM was mounted here with some two-sided tape. The receiver is mounted here with some two-sided tape. Uh, and then we've got this floating power, uh, little distribution hubby deal. We combined the BLM and the BEC together uh, on these outside ports, saving the center two for the big main power that's gonna run back to the electronic speed controller. So this is what it looks like, um, kind of all set up and ready to go. All right. Next step. Now, when you guys get this, this you're gonna have a red and a black. We just, we didn't have the proper gauge wire here right now. This is the proper gauge, just not red and black. This is your main power cord. So this is gonna get run through the center conduit. And then you've got four servo extensions. All right, we're gonna label them um, one at a time. And the reason that we're doing that is because once they're run through, it's kind of difficult to figure out which end belongs to what. All right. So we're going to grab all of those and the male ends. So the small ends like this, not the big fat one, right? Um, the male ends is going to go closest to your receiver. Okay. So we're going to grab all of these ends for all of these extensions and we're gonna feed them through the conduit along with our power cables like this all through that center until they're all the way through all right cables have been uh, run through and we've pulled the excess onto the forward side so they're pretty tight in the back we want to make sure we don't pull them through which is actually pretty tricky to do we're gonna put that here. Now we've got all of our cables here. And uh, since we were so smart, we know exactly what to plug them into. So um, we're gonna grab our power cable and we're gonna plug that into our power distribution number right there. So that's all done. Channel one is rudder, two is your forward dive planes, three is your motor, your uh, electronic speed controller for the back, four was our spare, five is our ballast control, which runs to our battery link monitor. So we plugged our um, ballast lead into the BLM. And then six is our stern plane override, which goes into the back. Uh, over there and we're gonna put our pitch controller in the back okay so we got our equipment tray in here we got everything hooked up we talked about the channels they're all associated everything is plugged in before you button everything up it is time to test so we're gonna take our radio power goes on always transmitter power first all right now we're gonna check power We've got lights on our BLM. There should be a flashing green light on the bottom of our receiver, which there is. And we can test uh, a couple of different functions. We've got our, uh, I guess that would be their forward planes. This is a spare channel. And all the rest of the cool stuff is in the back. So it looks good to the point where I feel pretty comfortable 
um, leaving this section alone. And now we're gonna move to the back before we button everything up and we'll test it. All right, we're working on the other end of the cylinder right now. We gave you lots of power cable here, okay? Um, what we're gonna need to do is cut about three or four inches off because we need to extend the power cable for the electronic speed controller. And these are the red and black cables coming from the back of the little BL Heli electronic speed controller. Jason's already done that in this particular case. You're gonna get two of these little uh, heat shrink soldering deals. And basically you just slip them on over the end made up the two ends and heat it up and that central little solder pouch will melt and fuse it together so now we've got this extension that's going to allow us to get access to the cables even when the cylinder tube is on okay uh, we've slipped the uh, motor bulkhead into the motor tube and now we got all of our wires sticking out the back here um, first thing that we're going to do grab our power cables. Uh, we've got positive, and I'm gonna take this, this quad thing, we're gonna put in the four side, in the four side, positive, negative. We're gonna take our two IS switch, positive and negative. That's done. Now we can start connecting everything. The 2IS is the ballast. B, 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 B. We labeled everything, fortunately, because we're super smart and very organized. B, now we've got our rudder. R, we've got our planes, P. And then the last one we've got here is motor. Like that. And we've got the power cables for the electronic speed controller. And those, that goes into the other side of our power block. All right. I don't know why you guys didn't remind me about the pitch controller, but the AD2, fortunately, is super easy to install. So um, we are just going to plug the pitch controller into the P. And then we're gonna take our stern plane and plug that into the uh, other side of the pitch controller into the, the plug there. Now this is kind of like up and running and working in theory. Now, not programmed and neither is the BLM. I'm not gonna get into that. I've got other videos talking about programming those and you get instructions with your unit. Now what you need to do, however, is mount the AD2 in its permanent location um, inside the cylinder. There's a nice platform right on top of the pumps that you can put that right there. Make sure you leave room for that set button because you need to program once you uh, get that unit locked down. Now, before we do anything more, test. Radio goes on. Power goes on. Do, 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 do. You need to hear all those chimes, okay? Test the motor. Looks good. And we've got our rudder. We've got our stern plane override. And our ballast. So the vent is working and the air pump is working. And you can check for the intake. Make sure it's sucking air. Everything looks good. Now we need to bundle all this up nicely, put everything together. All right, so congratulations. You've got your cylinder assembled, but there is one more thing that you need to do, and that is to test it for watertight integrity. Now, as I mentioned before, all of these watertight cylinders are tested before it's shipped out to you to make sure that there's no leaks or anything like that coming from the seals. But after you've played around with the installation of everything inside, you want to make sure that nothing got dislodged, uh, moved, or otherwise compromised. So now that you've got it fully assembled, you've got it fully put back together again, you've got it tightened down, you need to test it. To do that, um, you're going to tighten up all those knurled nuts, squish all of the seals in there, and you need to find a little body of water, be that uh, a sink, 
a tub or a swimming pool. And let's take a look how we do it here at the dry docks. All right, so uh, this is our test tank and Jason's just gonna dunk the cylinder in. And you're gonna notice he's gonna spin it upside down because it's important that you uh, get the ballast seal uh, on the side there under the water because that could potentially leak as well. Now that that's in there, he's gonna pressurize the cylinder by blowing in that test tube. And there is nothing going on. So rather than uh, pressure from the outside going in, we got pressure from the inside going out. And in theory, um, the seals will actually work even better when the pressure is coming from the other direction because they're cup seals. They're designed to seal harder and harder as the outside pressure increases. So there you go. Successful test of uh, the watertight cylinder. You should be ready for installation in your boat.